guys welcome back to another tips Tuesday video today as you can tell by the title I am going to be giving you my top six best tips for beginners to start running if you are not familiar with me or my channel I am a runner I have been running um, for probably almost a year now and I have a few tips that I wish that I would have known when I first started running so today I'm gonna share them with you and hopefully they will help you if you are starting a running journey yourself so let's go ahead and dive into them so for my very first tip it may seem really obvious but apparently it was not to me because I did not do it I have just incorporated this recently into my life and that is stretching and warming up before you run um, which I am just now incorporating and I wish that I would have done it last year whenever I started running I started running like all the time I started running the beginning of last year but just on the treadmill for like a minute here or there in like slow burst intervals and running around an outside trail at our gym but I did not run for very long maybe 30 seconds or a minute and then I would stop and walk and but last August, just for a little backstory, last August I committed to myself that I was going to run one mile every single day without stopping. That was my only requirement. It had to be at least one mile every day and I could not stop for that mile. And I committed to 30 days of that. I don't know if I recommend that now for other people if you're just starting out. Maybe a little slower process might work better for you. But it's what I committed to. It's what I wanted to do. I had already been working out and like I said doing like elliptical machines and stuff at the gym or running in small intervals on the treadmill and all of that. So when August came, I committed to that and I ran every single day for the month of August, at least one mile every day. And then I fell in love with running. And so by the end of September, my husband and I ran our very first 5K. Now we are training for a half marathon. Um, which we're in the middle of quarantine right now. So all of that stuff has kind of been put on hold the last couple months. So when the world get, opens back up and gets back to normal, then we will be completing a half marathon. So that's what we're doing right now. But that's just a little quick backstory. So that's how I started running. And I never incorporated stretching. That might sound crazy to some, but I just got out there and ran and really didn't think about stretching. It wasn't until some months had passed and my muscles started aching a little bit and being sore and I had to go to the chiropractor and they recommended just about a month or so ago that I take off a few weeks from running and I will tell you that it has been harder than I ever imagined to get back into it. I'm getting back in the swing of things now but if I can avoid you having to go through that or stop running or get injured or any of that then that's what I want to do. So I highly recommend stretching. The different research that I have read um, says that you should stretch after running that way your muscles are already warmed up and everything and they suggest doing like a five minute warm-up walk before you start running and then when you're done running doing like a post run stretch I have just been doing like a post run yoga stretch they have them all over YouTube there's tons of stretches out there um, I don't follow any one in particular every single time I just try to get at least five or ten minutes in worth of stretching when I'm done running every single time now I highly 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 suggest stretching and for tip number two this is one of the big ones so when I first started running like seriously running um, I was like running as fast as I possibly could because I thought that's what running was just like take off and run as fast as you can and my husband he had already been running for a little while and he was like babe slow down a little bit just kind of pace yourself. So once I did that and kind of started out like as a jog and pace myself, I realized how much better I could breathe, how much further I could go, and it made all the world of difference. So, and for me personally, I run for distance. I don't run for speed. I'm all about endurance and I want to go as far as I can for as long as I can, but not necessarily as fast as I can. My husband, he likes to do both. He likes to do some runs where he runs completely for speed and that's awesome if that's what you want to do. But me personally, I like to run for distance over speed and I notice the more that I pace myself and I'm not at a full on fast sprint. I can definitely go longer. I can pace my heart rate and breathing and all of that a little more and it just helps me to have a more successful run in my opinion for what works for me. So, but even if you do want to run for speed eventually, I suggest if you're just starting out in the beginning, just to pace yourself. Don't try to get the fastest mile that you can right off the bat. Pace yourself, go slow and work up to it. If you have to stop and walk a little bit in the beginning and just build up your run each time, do a little 
further, a little further, a little further. And if you want to add a little speed, a little speed as you go over time, slow and steady wins the race. So that I highly suggest just pacing yourself in the beginning, setting yourself maybe a distance goal and don't even look at the time and just make it to that distance. And then if you need to stop and walk, do that. Or if you're done with the run, set a distance that is a little further and just keep progressing as you go. That's one of the best piece of running advice that I can give you is to pace yourself. And if you want to follow like a couch to 5k program or something like that, you definitely can. But if you don't want to follow one of those programs and you're like me, just want to jump out there and get going, then I suggest at least starting off slow and work your way up. Start off with a mile at a time. Start off kind of slow and work your way up and build your endurance and your strength. And that's how I think you'll be the most successful runner that you can be. And for my third tip, this might not work for everybody, but for myself, I have found that I have my some of my very best runs early in the morning. I'm fasted because I haven't eaten anything since the night before. I feel light on my feet and I have my morning coffee or whatever, so I'm feeling like energized and ready to go. And, and then I have some of the best runs that I have ever had. And then when I am done with the run, I have the most energy throughout the day. I am more productive than on days that I don't run in the morning. So not only do I get a better run out of it, but then I also get a better day out of it, a more productive day. So I highly suggest running in the morning. If that doesn't fit into your schedule, then of course run whenever you can. Cause I've ran in the evening, afternoons all of that I live in Florida so it's a lot hotter in the afternoon so that always makes the runs a little bit harder but if time allows we like to run in the morning times and that works best for us and I personally like to run fasted because I like to just run feeling lighter if I eat I feel heavier and sluggish and my stomach cramps and I just don't like it it doesn't work for me I don't like it I know some people like to maybe eat like a banana or something um, I'm I live a low carb life if you're new around here so I don't eat bananas but I know that a lot of runners do they like to have something with like more carbs but that's light and have a piece of toast or a banana or whatever or if you are keto and you live a low carb life maybe like a pack of nut butter or something that's light on your stomach and isn't going to like weigh you down that's what I would suggest that's what I like to do and I have the most successful runs when I run fasted and for tip number four this is not a necessity for running but I definitely think that it helps I think that having some kind of a run tracker whether it be on a watch or on your phone or whatever I am more motivated to run when I look at my run tracker and I see how far I've gone or how many miles I've ran this month and how many I still want to run it or my times or whatever it is when you see progress and results and you can look at them tracked like mine I can look back over the week the month or the last year I can look at runs when I first started last year I use the app Runtastic not an ad but that's what I've used since the beginning that's what my husband uses to track his runs you can see the calories and the distance and the time and I use the free version they have a paid version also which you get a lot more features but I've used the free version since I started running and I absolutely love it and it helps me to be able to set goals whether it be for time if you're running for speed or for distance or for miles in a week a month or whatever so I highly recommend using an app tracker so that you can keep track of your results and set goals and all of that I definitely think that they help especially in the beginning but throughout your running journey as well. And for tip number five, it's another one that probably seems pretty obvious, but to get a good pair of running shoes. Now, I just bought a pair of Nikes from Ross and jumped out on the road and started running and never really thought much about it. But I definitely think that that played into some of the muscle and joint aches that I ended up having along with the stretching. So I highly recommend investing in a good pair of running shoes. And once you find them, then don't switch it up like don't get a brand new pair of shoes and just bust out on the road and go running because you'll definitely pay for it later if you do have to get a new pair of running shoes i suggest running short small distances in them and see how they feel see how your feet and legs feel and then go from there and if you have to get the new pair of shoes just each time just do that run in short small intervals and kind of work them in you don't want to just throw a brand new pair of shoes on your feet and go out and do some long distance running because it definitely won't be optimal for your feet your feet swell a little bit when you run so you always have to remember that especially if you're doing long distance running so just keep that in mind there are tons of resources to help you pick out the perfect shoe for your foot if you can go to a shoe store and have somebody help you out kind of see the shape of your foot and how your foot lands when you're 
your running and all of that and help you get the best running shoe for yourself. It's going to make your run so much easier and way more enjoyable. So I highly recommend getting a great pair of running shoes. And for tip number six, my very last tip and probably the most important in my opinion, and that is to make the most hype, lit, firest playlist that you possibly can make. If you're a podcast person, then pick out and follow the most amazing, awesome podcast that just lights your soul on fire. This is something that is absolutely huge for me. I have uh, multiple playlists. Some days I'm hip hop, Christian music. Some days I need some young jock. Some days I need Luke Bryan or Kane Brown. Like I love all types of music and different music fires me up in different ways, but music is like one of the biggest tools and hacks that I use in my life to fire me up when it comes to healthy eating, when it comes to motivation, working out in the gym, running, whatever. Music is like literally fire to my soul. So I highly, highly suggest just making the most bomb playlist that you can come up with of songs that will pump you up and get you moving and get you fired up and ready to rock and roll and get one that's like long and Enough that's going to last and that you're not going to hear the same song every single time because then that can get old and boring so definitely come up with a playlist that just totally like does it for you and then run your little heart out to it that's what I do I absolutely love music and I have listened to audiobooks and podcasts and stuff but they don't just fire me up the same way I like listening to music and enjoying my run but that might be different for everybody so find what works for you and you might just like running and nothing and thinking and that is amazing too and I give it to anybody that can do that that is absolutely amazing but I have to have my music I love my music and it's one of the things that gets me through every single run all right guys so there are my six quick tips for beginners if you are wanting to start running these are things that I highly suggest things that I wish that I would have known or done before I started running that would have totally helped and helped me now so I hope that they helped you in some way if you guys have any other awesome tricks and you are a runner I would love for y'all to pop them down in the comments below so that everybody else can learn from them and implement them into their own running journey and if you guys want to know more about my running journey in more detail or have any other questions or anything like that make sure to let me know down below and I can always do another video to help you guys out running has truly changed my life in more ways than I can count running has done more for my mind than it ever has done for my body and that is something else that I will encourage you guys to remember on your running journey your mind will give up long before your body ever will. And there will be some days that you are just like Forrest Gump and you take off and you feel like you can run a million miles. The furthest to date that I have ran as 11 miles without stopping. And I'm shooting for a half K, which is 13 miles. So... I'm still working up to that, but I will tell you that some days I can run five miles like that and some days three miles kills me. It has gotten better over time for sure, but I highly recommend just remembering that, that the mental strength that you'll gain from running will serve you better in life than the physical gains will ever serve you, in my personal opinion. It has done more for my mind and my tenacity and grit for life. Like, being able to accomplish a five-mile run without stopping, coming from somebody that used to be overweight, smoke cigarettes, couldn't barely breathe walking down the street, it has done more for me than I can even begin to relay to you guys. I And it has given me more of a sense of accomplishment and drive to want to do more and gain more strength and just grit for life overall. I would recommend endurance workouts probably more than anything else. Just literally for the, the strength of your mind that you gain. I can't recommend running enough. And this is coming from somebody I literally couldn't run down the block. Would be totally out of breath and I mean a hot mess. I hated running. I didn't think that I could run. Everything hurt. My, I mean I was literally a mess and now... I run all the time. I'm going to be doing a video also that says my running schedule and how I break my runs up and my distances and all of that. That'll be coming in another video where I kind of explain my whole workout routine through the week. How when I strength train, when I run and all of that. So if you are not part of the YouTube fam here already, I would love if you'd hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. That way when I upload any of those videos, you guys will know you won't miss out on them. And any tips that you guys want 
me to share with you that would help you on your health journey in any way, make sure to let me know that down below as well so that I can be producing content that helps you guys and serves you guys. That's my whole point here. I hope to inspire and motivate and teach you guys anything that I've learned on my own health journey. And I also have tons of motivation over on my Instagram. I'm active daily over there, so make sure to check me out over there. I'll pop it on the screen here, and I always have it linked down below. And I hope to connect with you guys over there and in the comments. And again, always thank you guys so very much for watching, and thank you for supporting me. Thank you for commenting below. And if you guys know anybody that's wanting to start a running journey or a health journey, in general make sure to share this video out that definitely helps me out and make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and again thank you guys so very much for watching and I will catch y'all in the next one